What's up dudes? Today I'm going to talk about how I learned and forgot how to wheelie. Alright, so last year, no this wasn't last year, this was almost two years ago before my fatty fifth birthday, dude. I decided to challenge myself and see if I could learn how to wheelie before my birthday. I had about a month to work on it, but I decided to kind of take it one day at a time and just allot a certain amount of time each day to practice. I decided on 25 to 30 minutes, I would set a timer. If I was feeling good, I would kind of keep going. If I was feeling bad, I'd push through and you know just do the, the allotted 25 minutes. It was amazing how much progress I made and how quickly when I actually committed to practicing. I've been mountain biking for 30 years and I consider it entirely pathetic, and you probably do too, that I cannot wheelie. I'm not talking about like wheelie as a skill. I've got that. I've got, you know, wheelies and manuals as a skill. I can lift my front wheel up. But what I'm talking about is taking it from where it's a skill to a trick to impress your friends. I could wheelie maybe a parking spot or so but it was kind of a pathetic wheelie. It wasn't, you know, I definitely wasn't at the balance point and it was definitely not something I could sustain. And I was doing the thing, you know, you, if you've tried to wheelie and you suck at it like I do, or, you know, you've seen people do this wheelie style where you're kind of chasing it. You know, you're, you've got the wheel too low, but you're pedaling super fast to kind of, you know, try to keep that front end up. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to actually feel the balance point and learn how to wheelie. First day I went out and I went to, to practice behind a CVS pharmacy here. Uh, near my house, near uh, right by the BK drive-through, which smelled lovely, and it was just kind of perfect. And that there weren't a lot of people there because no one parks there because they don't want to get their windows smashed and their shit grabbed. So I have this slight uphill with more parking spots than I could handle at the time, and I went out to kind of determine what, you know, where I was at, you know, after 25 minutes, and then what my my goal was going to be. And there would be you know kind of interim goals, and then I'd reassess throughout the process. Uh, and so I went, I think the first day I went from being able to wheelie barely across two spots to wheeling was it six or nine. Oh, just a side note here. I am wearing a thermal riding jersey from Endurance Threads because I just got it and I was just really excited. And it's not that warm in my office here because it's in a three season porch. I like the, the sublimated buttons. Those aren't real buttons if you can't tell. It's got a zip, but then it's got sublimated button but and yeah so i think after the first day I, I wheelied nine spots which definitely wasn't a very solid wheelie but i decided at that point that my goal was to do 16 spots which i mean you guys know that i'm great at math so uh i think that translates into 45 yards uh parking spot is generally 8.5 to 9 feet across and i think roughly it was 16 parking spots was going to be my goal uh my 45 yards for 45 hey on my first day i just went out and kind of did what felt right so i think i was in fourth gear on a, at that point i was on a different bike i was on a gx eagle drivetrain so i was in fourth gear whatever that is uh you know kind of kind of a little bit light uh dropper about two inches down i was on flat pedals okay that's key so i'm not a flat pedal rider i do mess around with them i dabble but uh I was using flat pedals for this process. I was too afraid of looping out and hitting my coccyx. You know, I didn't want to hit my coccyx. You know, I've, I've always kind of wanted to wheelie. It's definitely not something I can do innately. I'm not a natural at it. You know, there are some amazing people out there and they probably shouldn't be watching this video. The extent of my wheelie practice was like a couple attempts before a ride, get frustrated, just go ride over rocks and do my normal thing. It is very different when you commit to, I am doing wheelies for 25 minutes. I made more progress in those 25 minutes than I would have thought possible. This is definitely not a how-to video. There, I have posted a wheelie video before that was not a how-to video, which is very confusing for not very smart people. You guys are gonna get it. There are so many how-to videos on wheelie. I mean, the I can explain to someone, like a lot of teachers, you know, the whole the obnoxious saying, those who can't do, teach. Well, I have taught kids how to do wheelies in three seconds who are, you know, they're kids who have like cat-like reflexes and they're just mutants and they can just, with the basic instructions of how to wheelie, which I'm not gonna even go over here, they were able to wheelie away off into the sunset. For me, I, I don't know what the hell is wrong with me, but I'm sure there are people out there like me who struggle with it and think they can't wheelie. That was me. Like I, I've been doing this for 30 years. I'm pretty good at a lot of stuff, you know, related to mountain biking. 
suck at wheelies, suck at manuals. Uh, not, not too great at jumping. Maybe we'll work on that for 47, which is coming right up. I'm gonna hock 47 feet to flat for my 47th birthday. How's that? Yeah, so going into day three, I, you know, I was posting some little, you know, little clips or whatever on Instagram, and I got some tips from some people I respect as wheelie experts. I also got a lot of tips from people who have no idea what they're talking about, which is the way the internet works. You know, there's people, people I know like Curtis Jackson and Donrick Pond. I'll link to the Donrick video. Donrick and wheelie over 12 miles. It's, I mean, it's insane. So some of the tips I got was use a slight uphill, which I, which I did get that I was, I was doing that. You do want to pop up pretty hard. Some people said slightly bent arms. Some people say full lockout, you know, where you're, where you're just hanging off the bars. I think that's like a personal preference thing. I think both work. So I decided to try both. Another thing I worked out on that day was, um, looking past the goal, like looking to the horizon and just kind of ignoring what, you know, where I was supposed to be going and trying to just go past it. And that seemed to work pretty well. And also just, you know, keeping the eyes level rather than looking, you know, down. And I think day three, I was able to get 12 spots. So that was a, that was a good increase uh, from, from day, day two. Something I kept trying to do was try different things, but limit how many things I was trying per day. You know, just kind of just trying to focus on one thing at a time. Uh, rather than, you know, changing every variable. But, you know, people are going to tell you, I mean, people wheelie in different ways. Not everyone wheelies the same way. And they might tell you, this is the way you're supposed to wheelie. And you probably don't want to listen to those people. <laughs> so I listened, to, I listened to different people talk about how they wheelie. And I tried all those different things. I mean, one thing for me, I mean, just for, for safety, it's, I mean, a huge part of the wheelie how-to is covering the rear brake. And so that was something I definitely had to get pretty comfortable with because that, you know, I think if you're like me, it's the balance point is, you know, amazing people have no problem with this, but you know, people like us, we, we have a problem with the balance point. It's, it's scary. It's farther back than you think. And it's scary as hell. I mean, you feel like your, your ass is like on the ground. Then you look at yourself on video and you're like, eh, my wheel is barely off the ground. Like what, what am I, what am I worried about here? Um, you kind of get with, with flat pedals, you just got to get past the, the fear that you're going to end up on your ass. Cause you I mean, I, did, I, throughout this entire process, I never ended up on my ass. I definitely looped it, I think only intentionally though, uh, because I was covering that rear brake like a demon. Uh, yeah, so I think day four, what I was working on was looping it and you know getting past the balance point just to know like how much farther back the looping point is than the balance point. And it's pretty far back. And so it was actually difficult to, to loop it out, but that that was very reassuring once I got it done. It was comforting how quickly I could get my feet on the ground and, and get out of it. And also just knowing that, you know, the loop point is, it's farther back than the balance point. So that's, that's I think that that was a huge thing. That was a suggestion someone gave me. And uh, that, that worked pretty well for me. I think that helped a lot just to assuage some of my fears. One thing I was trying to get away from, and I know a lot of people have a problem with this. Not the amazing people is the chasing it thing. Is that, you know, when you're, you know, you're trying to like pull up with your arms and then you're, you're pedaling really quickly instead of in a nice controlled manner and, you know, using your brake and using the pedaling to sit on the balance point. I didn't want to be there. I wanted a real wheelie. I wanted it to be solid. Uh, and so that was something I kept trying to get away from was the chasing it thing. And I, and I hated when I finished a wheelie, even though I was, if I was making, you know, a, a superior distance goal, I was still pissed if I was, you know, you know, chasing it. Another thing too I found was that, you know, when you start to get frustrated, you kind of just got to reset, just maybe try, you know, start to work on something different, you know, shake the etch -a sketch if you remember those things and, and just do a restart. Yeah. So going, going into day six was a point where I, I, I gotten kind of frustrated and especially with, with the chasing thing. And I was, I was kind of just focused on the, let's go a farther distance. So I was you know, putting in a bigger gear and going faster where that wasn't really hooking me up. I, I needed to kind of, at that point, you know, backtrack and, uh, uh, Joel Nagman, who's a, a wheelie master who I've met on the racing scene. He told me to just really focus on that balance point. And so at that point, what I did was I used a much lower gear. I think I used a uh, third gear on my, my uh, GX Eagle. I was in this much lower gear. So I, I had to kind of find, find that balance point. And that's when I, I started to make more corrections, you know, like where I'd start to lose it. 
but then I was able to kind of like drag a little bit of break or, you know, turn my knees, turn the bars and kind of stay on track and, and just play with that, just sitting on the balance point, but doing much slower wheelies, but almost making the same distance and definitely feeling better about it, just doing it in more control and instead of just chasing the distance, the arbitrary distance goal. I think that's also where I started being able to, if I started to, to loop a little bit, I would just coast and that, that felt super good, like a little back pedal and, it, and then catch it. And that when I started to be able to make corrections, I knew I was making some serious progress. All right, so that was my favorite wheelie ever. It was probably slightly shorter, but I just like how controlled I felt and uh, how I started to lose, I was able to correct and I wasn't just chasing it until the very, very end. But I think it was close to one of my longest. It wasn't quite the longest, I don't think, but that was my favorite wheelie. It was slow and in control and I think that's more important just kind of taking a step back and not focusing on the distance so much as just having it be solid and just focus on the process of getting it like not perfect but feeling good and feeling tight the whole way through. And there were definitely there were days where I got really frustrated and just kind of stuck and I mean some some of the practice sessions flew by and then there were a couple where I was like this is work you know this is this is definitely hard but I kind of pushed through made no progress but just kind of pushed through it and was glad it was over and then other days I went longer I got nothing today but I started doing I was getting solid I think 40 yards on day 7 but nice and controlled uh, I felt pretty pretty confident about those 40 yards I was getting uh Still, ha I was still having a lot of issues with the side to side. Uh, Donner said that's something you're just gonna, you're just gonna learn not to do, or you're gonna learn to kind of counter steer against that, you know, that side to side falling thing. Which I think, I don't know. I feel like I'm more prone to that than other people may, because my freaking body's so twisted. One thing I did that was kind of ridiculous is that imagine that, is that I pretended that I already knew how to wheelie, and so like sometimes I'd start a session, I go. I already know how to wheelie a mile. I could just wheelie as far as I want. And then I'd start wheeling and it, it kind of worked. I think, I think I did make some progress by telling myself I already knew how to wheelie. Um, I'm probably not gonna try that with karate. I'm gonna go start a fight with that black belt and pretend that I already know karate. Yeah, so going into day eight of practice, uh, I found a great spot to, to do it up at the Arnold Arboretum. This was, again, this is pre-COVID, so there were lots of people you know, out and about, no masks, you know, we're all wearing our masks now in Boston, we're doing our part. So I found this perfect spot to apply everything I learned over the previous week of practice. You know, it was this, you know, slight uphill, more distance than I needed, unless I, I really got crazy. Uh, I was able to wheelie 57 yards that day. At that point, I definitely wasn't focused on the goal. It was just, I'm gonna see how far I can wheelie. And I was just looking up, you know, at the horizon basically and wheeling as far as I could. I felt like I wheelied forever. I think it was more like 16 seconds based on my GoPro POV, but it felt like forever. I'm wheeling, I'm wheeling. It was definitely a huge improvement over a crappy wheelie over a couple and a half parking spots where it wasn't even a real wheelie. It was just a few few pedal strokes with my wheel up and then just worried I was gonna fall over backwards. It was much more like a real wheelie. It was what I imagined a, a wheelie being. It felt awesome and it was probably impressive to a couple of the old ladies walking by that day. I was able to achieve my goal of 45 yards by 45 years old. You know, all of those years ago, back in the old Arboretum. The sad epilogue to this story is that I then went on to pretty much completely forget how to wheelie. I went back to my clipless pedals. I went back to just maybe throwing a couple wheelies in here and there. I just kind of forgot all about it. And I can definitely wheelie better than I could before, which was freaking pathetic but I don't have a 50 yard wheelie. I don't, where it's, you know, you'd actually see me wheeling down the street, go, oh, that guy knows how to wheelie if I was doing 50. <laughs> There's all these kids in my neighborhood who can just wheelie at will, you know, on scooters, bikes, whatever. They're just born wheeling, they're amazing. I will reiterate, I am not amazing, and this is not a video for amazing people. It's for people like you and me who just need to try wicked hard. But I mean, the key to that is just, you know, getting off your ass and starting just, just a lot a certain amount of time to practicing you know before a ride or or whatever you know i started going out and it would be my, my dog walk as i'd go out to the park and you know do do a little loop whatever a few miles but i would stop and practice wheelies for 25 minutes and it was incredible 
when I actually did commit to it, that I was able to make progress at all where I thought I couldn't wheelie. I mean, there's probably a lot of you who think that you can't wheelie. If you just go and practice, you might be able to wheelie. I mean, maybe, maybe you won't be able to, or maybe you will, and then you'll forget how to wheelie like I did and feel like a freaking loser. I think by spinning this sad tale of you guys today, that I have motivated myself to go out and at least try to regain what I lost in the, in the realm of wheeling and at least get back to that same point. Maybe I have to do 47 yards because now I'm turning freaking 47, dude. All right, dudes, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're like me and you're, you're not amazing and it's wicked hard for you to, to learn shit, uh, go out and, and practice. You know, I don't care if it's dark outside, put on your ninja suit, go out in traffic and practice your freaking wheelies.